Um, it's time for the herd hierarchy. We are now starting to get a separation. The best quarterback dating to last Thursday, Brock Purdy over Geno, to last night, Josh Allen over Aaron. The best quarterback, and we told you it was coming, won every game this weekend. So you'll notice in the herd hierarchy, there's some pretty good quarterbacks. Here we go. Herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. Number 10. Tampa Bay Buccaneers 4-2. and two. Their offense leads the NFL with four games over 30 points. And Baker Mayfield dating the last year is humming. A big part of it is... He and Chris Godwin are money together, and also the run game here is second in the league. Rashad White, Bucky Irvin, Sean Tucker. Giving Baker Mayfield a run game like any quarterback is a game changer. Baker Mayfield right now, he's going to get some Pro Bowl votes. He's humming. The Bucks are their 10. Number nine. Atlanta just beat them barely, so I'll give Atlanta, who's 2-0 and on the road. I don't think they're quite as inconsistent defensively, or, or I should say overall as an effort team. I like Kirk Cousins, been around the league, consistent personality, 2-0 and on the road. Their issue is they don't get to the quarterback. They brought Matthew Judon in from New England. He hasn't done anything. So they only have five sacks this year. So I think, I think Atlanta and Tampa are the two best teams. I think, I think Kirk Cousins is such a steady, unemotional ship. I'd give them a slight edge, but those two teams are going to battle to the end. Carolina Saints are toast. They got, both those teams have a million issues. Number eight. Buffalo, they're 4-0 against teams under 500. they They're a little like the Dallas Cowboys. Can't beat the good teams, beat the bad teams. And they are 21-5 against the AFC East over the last five seasons. So it's a little Dallas Cowboys. They can be fool's gold. Um, I will say the offense is tied for the second fewest giveaways in the NFL this year, and James Cook was out last night. I think they have added a dimension to their offense. I love their tight end, Kincaid, Dawson Knox. But we got to be honest, they don't beat the good team. Kansas City beats the good teams. Baltimore can beat the good teams. Buffalo's not beating the good teams. I put them at eight. Number seven. I may have the Packers too low again this week. Lead the NFL in turnover differential. Jordan Love's missed two games. He's second in the league in touchdown passes. I love this kid. Had my questions early. He's humming. Dobbs, Christian Watson. They got three tight ends I like. Um, five different players have multiple touchdown receptions. Nobody else in the NFL is saying that. Um, and they, they lead the NFL with 54 what they call big plays. So again this week, I have them probably a spot too low, but they're a young team and can be a tad inconsistent half to half, but I have them at seven. Number six. If Joe Mixon plays, I think the Texans are a handful. Their only loss came on the road to the Vikings. They had a stinker. Everybody gets a stinker. Everybody but the Chiefs gives you a stinker. Uh, Joe Mixon changes C.J. Stroud. Uh, Nico Collins out. They got to get him back. The defense with D'Amico Ryans is excellent. Uh, I think this team could get to the AFC Championship. I don't think they're quite mature enough with big game experience to beat a Kansas City. But if I was Kansas City, I wouldn't want to play them. I, I think this team's really good. Texans six. Number five. Niners. Now, they're not good in the red zone. My belief is Christian McCaffrey will solve that. Uh, but they've led by 10-plus points in five of six games. They are physical. Uh, they're multidimensional. Because of Shanahan, they all seemingly always have a lead. Uh, number two passing offense, number three rushing offense, and that's that's without Christian McCaffrey. Also, Brock Purdy has been tremendous on third down this year. You know how much that means to me. I think the great quarterbacks are third down quarterbacks. Mahomes the best in a long time. I have San Francisco at five. Number four. Ravens at four, number one total offense, number one rushing offense. Lamar Jackson is now 22-1 and one against the NFC. I worry about their... Uh, pass defense and this is this is going to be the big issue with this team is they're going to play down even the games they play well and lead I worry about them late in games but you know I love me Lamar Jackson in Baltimore I have him at four number three but I like that old line with Detroit that I think can control the clock and keep their secondary which is a liability off the field now they got to figure out what to do with Hutchison's loss Max Crosby I mean the, the Raiders just gave out Devontae Adams do you give away Max Crosby and you get more picks 
Um, they have an excellent running back duo, best offensive line. Uh, but the schedule gets tough now. Three of the next four games, Vikings, Packers, Texans. There's going to be a couple L's here potentially for the Lions. Number two. Vikings. Off a of bye. They're going to beat Detroit. That's my guess. One of my picks of the week. Off a of bye. This team's going to beat Detroit. Detroit's off a huge win, feeling themselves. Only undefeated team in the NFC. Now, again, like Baltimore, my concern is great against the run, not great against the pass. I could see this team going to the playoffs and dominating somebody and leaking oil on the back end, and that's why I have them at two. Number one. Kansas City, 11 straight wins. They're, you know... I, I still never know what I'm getting at wide receiver. Uh, is Rasheed Rice coming back? Juju Smith-Schuster can't separate. Uh, Xavier Worthy's kind of a gadget guy. Travis Kelsey can disappear. But best defensive lineman, best defensive coordinator, best coach, best quarterback. O-line's good enough. Uh, I think, you know, I, I, I'm just going to take him, put him here. I guess they're more vulnerable. I guess. But um, they get number one. All right. Nick Wright is now joining me live. Nick Wright. Anything anything about that? Now, i, I got to be honest. A couple of weeks ago, online study said that the herd hierarchy had become the sort of default ranking system in America. Uh, that's what the polls say. What do you make of oh, mine? Oh, yeah, listen. Of all the traditional, some would call it archaic power <laughs> ranking systems, yours is the best. Everyone agrees. <laughs> now, you want a true tier system with a committee and names, they people know where to go to. But for yeah. the old school power rankings, this is the best. Um, I would, uh, third straight week, I don't have any real issues. I would have the Bears in there in uh, place of the Falcons. 11. They but were 11. But that's probably a 9-11. Yep. Right? That's what I figured you were going to say. Like that 9-10-11, the Bucks, like it, it was two Thursdays ago, but it really looked like the Bucks had that Falcons game won. Yep. And then they squandered it at the end. The Bucks could be sitting here at five and one. And I mean, don't look now, but MVP yeah. Baker Mayfield yeah. could be coming to a to an award ceremony near you. He's been awesome. And the and Todd Bowles deserves credit. Yep. And so the Bucks are a real team. I agree with the reason I said flip the Falcons and the Bears is just because of those same concerns about the Falcons defense that you uh, alluded to. But yeah, otherwise, I think there's really solid power or herd hierarchy once again. Okay, so I, I, last night I watched the Jets. What do you know? They fire Sala, their best coach on the staff, and their defense isn't as good. But they got rid of Hackett, which Sala wanted to, and their offense ran motion and ran the ball. So if Sala could have just stayed and they moved or demoted Hackett, I think they could win the game last night. I don't think they were as good defensively. So before we get to Devontae Adams, I broke this down earlier. There were four big plays in the second half of this game, and the Bills made all of them. Taylor Rapp, a couple of breakups, the amazing interception by Teron Johnson, which is an all-time play, and then Josh Allen on third and four running for it, doing a Mahomes. I think he might have just decided, I'm going to run for it, and those were the four big plays. But I did come out of that thinking, it's a grown-up offense. They face a lot of mediocre quarterbacks coming up. I don't think the sky is falling oh, at two no. and – am I nuts? Oh, no. You're nuts. You're <laughs> nuts. There, I, listen, 24 days ago, Aaron Rodgers told the media, the next step for us is to learn, expect to win, and learn to dominate. Since then – they lost to Bo Nix and the Broncos and were held in single digits. Roger, they lost. They were down 17-0, lost to the Vikings, fired their coach, blew a game to Buffalo, panic traded for Devontae Adams. This is a bad team. And I saw, you know, colleagues that I respect saying, oh, today is the fork in the road moment for the Jets, either the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning. No, it's not. It, it, game 32 for the Washington Wizards when they lose to the Hawks is not a fork in the road moment of the franchise. It's just the franchise continuing to be the franchise. I'm 40 years old, Colin. There have been few truisms in my life in sports. One of them is this. The Jets have always been the Jets. They've been poorly run. They have bad ownership. They don't, they're not forward thinking. I had to listen to people all offseason lecture me about how great their weapons are. And now you've got the quarterback 
publicly throwing under the bus Mike Williams, who they're going to end up trading, I would assume, for 10 cents on the dollar because he's not on the same page as Rodgers, and now Devontae's there, and they're going to act like that's the problem. The problem with the Jets, Colin, is very, very simple. There are two things. First one is this. If the ball is not out within two seconds, they are cooked because Rodgers, when it comes out quick, it looks good. It looks sharp. They look, they're on time, but he can't move. And the line for the sixth straight year can't hold up. The other problem is this, and this is a real indictment because Rodgers yesterday publicly throwing Mike Williams under the bus yeah. was such an embarrassing moment. He is the anti Patrick Mahomes. You give Patrick Mahomes the ball with a chance to win the game. You trust he is going to go win the game. And after the game, if they don't win, no matter how outrageous it sounds, he's going to say, that's my fault. Yeah. That was on me. I should have handed the ball to MVS. Rodgers, three weeks ago, chance to beat the Broncos. Ball in his hands. They get 14 yards of offense in terrible weather. Put the kicker in a rough spot. He misses the kick. Last week, ch- down six. Chance to win the game. Ball in his hands. Interception thrown to Mike Williams. Last night, ball in his hands. Down three. Chance to win the game. Interception thrown to Mike Williams. Then a post-game press conference where he all but diagrams the All-22 explaining how not my fault at all. You're not going to win that way. They're not a good, they don't have enough talent. The defense isn't good enough. They're not a receiver away. So, no, I, I do yeah. think you're crazy. They're a two-win team that is supposed to be a two-win team. 